Open them up to the Word of God. I appreciate Brother D. Hart. Always comes with the Word of God and, and it take, takes you to a place in the book where you can study and, and look at what he's preaching about. I appreciate men who come with an open book. And uh, I, when I come to church, I want to hear from the book. Amen. Yeah. Brother Richard, good to have you here. Good to see Miss Brenda tonight and that granddaughter again. She's growing up, making a beautiful young lady, and we're so glad that they're able to be with him tonight. Keep him a little bit straighter. Hey, <laughs> Amen. That's a fact. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. I told her the other day I was going to, have to put a ball bat at the door. Keep them boys away. But uh, it's good to be here tonight. appreciate the opportunity to come, and we appreciate the Lord. He's so good. And you pray for us. We, had, we preached at the Life Care Center this morning, had a good service. Then we're filling in up at Philadelphia, Tennessee, at Johnson Baptist Church. They're our pastor right now. I'll be there next two Sundays. Pray that we can encourage them and, and get a good pastor. I told them Sunday, I said, listen, the woods are full of preachers. But pastors are hard to come by. And uh, you pray to God and give them a good pastor. In the book of Titus chapter 2 tonight. Titus chapter 2. Any good to know the Lord? Lord's been good to me. Tomorrow I'll be 80 years old. It's praying to you. Sometimes I feel like it, and sometimes I feel like I'm not. But God sure has been good to me. I appreciate His goodness. I appreciate your pastor. I was thinking today, I met him when he first came here, and been a true friend, and Talked to him many times, and he's preached for me up in North Carolina. He come up there and try to straighten them North Carolinas out, but, <laughs> but appreciate him coming. And Sister Jen, I, boy, I thoroughly enjoyed that song she sung Sunday morning. That was a beautiful song, yeah. and she sang it any time she wants to for me. <laughs> hey. All right, Titus chapter two, verse eleven. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared. To all men, I'm glad of that. Teaching us that nine ungodly and worthy lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Looking, now you won't have no problem fulfilling verse 12. If, you, if, you've, been, if you've been through verse 11, you have no problem fulfilling verse 12 if you're looking for the blessed hope. The person who's looking for the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ is going to be living right. I believe that. And the glorious appearing of the great God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gives himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Let us pray. Father, thank you tonight for this opportunity you give us to be in the house of the Lord. I realize, Lord, that tonight, God, I need you and I ask you to touch us and fill us with your spirit. Thank you, God, for being with Brother George through the surgery. I ask you, God, to give him a speedy recovery and blessing. I thank you for his friendship. Bless his dear wife. Bless the church during this time, God. Keep them close to you, God, I pray, and this blessing intervene. Use us tonight, God, to be a blessing to him in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Well, I do appreciate Brother George. He, he just, you can't get to keep a good man down long. He told me yesterday, Lord, will he be here? But I appreciate him and glad God got, got him. Maybe you're going to get him straightened out here. I want to look tonight on the blessed hope. I was thinking today about preaching here. I'm sure, I know a lot of other preachers have been here. He's been here 39 years. I'm sure I'm not going to preach anything you ain't already heard. Yeah. Amen. Right. But maybe I can refresh you, refresh you with something happy, you, encourage you. But the blessed hope is what I'm going to look at tonight. First of all, in way of introduction, as it was in the days of Noah, the Bible said, so it's going to be in these days. And Genesis 6 said that there's on, there's on weakened, their mind was on weakened at all times. Yeah. All time wow. weakened. And we got the, I believe this, we got the most wicked world that I've ever seen in my lifetime. Yes. Yes. And uh, it's going on. Then he said today a lot. What's going on today a lot? Homosexuality. Yes. 
Now, adults, I don't agree with it. But when you start messing with my kids, I get some of my blood. Yes. Yes. I mean, no, no right to teach kids. And that's, what we, that's how warped we are in America. Yeah. And then wars and rumors of war, the Bible said in Matthew 24 and 6. Yes. Nations against nations, kingdoms against kingdoms. And shall be famines and pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places. Yeah. All these things we see and fulfill. Then I can go on a little further. Look at Timothy, he said, peerless times. All that time there in verse 1 through 3 or 9 is going on today in our country. Our country is, is as far away from God as I've ever seen in my life. Yes. They got everything on their mind but God. And, and they won't have a good time, a lot of pleasure. They don't realize there's a time coming they're going to stand before God. With all that in our mind tonight, what I read tonight ought to be a blessing to us. Yes. Our blessed hope. So, and I believe it's near. That's what I'm trying to make sure tonight. I believe it's near. I believe it's right at the door. Lord's are coming after his church. Now, I believe this tonight. How I many is ancient for him to come? Yes. Amen. I believe the Lord's more anxious than we are. I believe he's going to come get us. Amen. He, he said, he, I, I believe he knows the world's in bad. He knows more than we do because he knows all things. Yes. He's anxious to come after his bride. Do you remember when you asked your wife to, or husband, wife to marry you? Uh, maybe the wife might ask the husband. I don't know. But <laughs> you remember when you did? You set a date. You know what you started doing? You got anxious as that date come, come closer and closer and closer. Now I believe the Lord knows. I maybe he's looking over at the Father and says, "Is it time to go get my bride?" One of these days, now are the sons of God that does not yet appear. What we shall be, we know when He shall appear. We shall be like Him, because we shall see Him as He is. Let's look at these verses tonight. We see first of all the character of hope. The character of hope in verse thirteen. Looking for that blessed hope in glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We see the, the, the definition of hope. He said hope which means a, a hope which means a evidence that is certainly to, uh, to happen. I'll get it right in a minute. It's going to happen. It's settled. Yes. It's settled. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I know what's happening. He's coming. He's coming after me and you. Any moment, think about it. Before you could blink your eye right now, we could be in his presence. That's how fast we're leaving out of here. And people said, I'll get, I'll, get ready. I'll get ready when I want to. No, you won't. You better get ready when you, well, it's time to get ready. Grace period, see, under the law, it closed out. And grace came in. And grace period is going to close out one of these days. Now, I, I believe this on my heart when Noah built that ark. I believe this after that blood flood started coming, the rain started coming. I believe there's people trying to knock on them doors and get in. But it's too late. Yeah. And the Lord's soon coming. And you better be ready to meet him. So we see hope is evidence that is certain to ha occur. It's going to occur. It's going to happen. Just like God said he would. I'm going to let it settle in heaven. It's going to occur. Then we see the delightful of this hope. It's a blessed hope. A blessed, think about it, a blessed hope. Yes. That's a happy thing to me. A blessed hope. Thank God for him. Then the degree of this hope is based on the Word of God. Yeah. The decree of this hope is based on the Word of God. Whatever we know and whatever we go by, we better go on the Word of God. And this hope we got in the Lord Jesus Christ is based in the Word of God. That's why, it's a, that's why we can count on it. And that, look what he tells us in John 14, verse 1 through 3. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house were many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. If I go to prior place for you, I will come again and receive you on myself. Where I am, right there you may be also. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Why? He, the mansion. The mansion don't mean much, but wait we see a place he's got for us. John said, I saw that new Jerusalem coming down. 
Thank God. He's coming, coming down like a bride. I believe it'd be one of the most beautiful things you'll ever lay your eyes on. Yes. Two things I believe would be the most beautiful thing you'll ever lay your eyes on. First of all, Jesus. Jesus, and I told him today, after, today as I was preaching, I don't believe Jesus is going to look like the pictures that got drawn of him. No. But I'm going to thank God I'll know him. Yes. How am I going to know him? The only thing that, that's going to be in the, <coughs> excuse me, the only thing that's going to be in heaven is what a man made with some scars. Yes. We're going to know him by the scars on his hands and on his foot and in his side. Think about it. We'll know him. Know him. We're going to see him as I want to go to our God. We're going to see him as he is. And thank God for that today. He's coming. Acts 1 and verse 7 said, The same Jesus was taken from you into heaven shall come again in light matter. Watch it. They were walking down the road with him. He was telling all once he, he left out in the cloud. Men stood gazing. And, and what did he say? Why stand here gazing? This same Jesus. He's coming again in light matter. That's the word of God. Amen. And he's, he, he's going to prepare a place for us. Thank God. That's the word of God. And that's our hope. Yes. That's the hope we got. And then he said to, in 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16, 7, The Lord himself shall ascend from heaven with a shout, the voice of the and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which lie men shall be called up, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I like that. So shall we ever be with the Lord. What a day that's going to be. Amen. When we see him face to face, thank God, and go into that new Jerusalem. Thank God. Somebody said, People die, they, they go up there in the new heaven. I, I don't believe I don't believe that. I believe in the presence of the Lord. I believe that. But I believe we're going to all go to Jerusalem at the same time as telling God. That's my belief. But agree. He's coming. It, how do I know it? Well, why, why is it a hope? Because it's based on the Word of God. Now I'm glad when you base your doctrine and your belief on the Word of God, you can stand on it. It's real. Yes. And fourthly, we see the desirability of the hope. Looking. Are you looking? Looking for that blessed hope. If you look at the world's turmoil, I told my wife the other day, I, said, I was listening to news. And listening to news sometimes is almost like reading what's going to happen to our world. We're close to being the communist nation. We're close to being a destroyed nation if you don't, don't, if you don't believe it. And, if I, you know, and listen, I believe the Lord is getting ready to come after his bride. And we need to be looking for him. You know what John said in John Revelation 22, 20? He said in verse 7, I come quick. He said in verse 12, I come quick. He said in verse 20, I come quick. You know what John said? Even so, yes. come, yes. Lord Jesus. Yes. That will be our prayer. That's the only hope we got. Yeah. Amen. This world is not my home. I've got a house, a house over yonder. That's not my home, earth home. That's my earth home. But I got a home in heaven made by God Himself. And that's where I'm going one day, spend eternity. And thank God, the devil can't enter in. Some of these politicians won't ever enter in. There'll be no more cursing, no more beer cans. And all that stuff. Bud Lizer is back in that man that wants to be a woman. Ain't that, ain't that a disgrace? Yeah. And I don't mean to get all that stuff, but that's where we're at today. Yeah. And we need to realize God ain't gonna, God's not going to take this stuff much longer. He, he, listen, the bride has been abused. Yeah. God's church has been abused. It used to be over, overseas, the missionaries abused. But it's in America now. And why? why? Because the devil's on the war path. See, if you read Revelation 12, it said he knows his days are short. Yeah. You know, because he knows his days are short, he's working. Not all, he's not working overtime. He's working all the time. You, you say he don't ever bother you. He probably don't. He's bothering me most of the time. <laughs> 
I, the devil's not like God, but he's got a lot of workers. He's got demons. And, he, and they're trying their best to feed us, destroy us. And our hope is looking for that blessed hope and glorious period of the great God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you looking tonight? The word looking speaks of the desire for this hope. The desire of this hope. Yeah. Looking for him. Then secondly, notice the coming is coming in this hope. In verse 13. Glorious appearing. The glorious appearing. What do you mean glorious when he appears? Think about it. Tonight, before we leave here, he can walk out on a cloud, say, come up here, and we're leaving out. In a moment, the twinkling eye, we're going to be in his presence. Think about that. Then, I, then I, this is D-Hart, my D-Hart's belief. I believe maybe, Lord, uh, we're up in the cloud. Maybe he'll let us fellowship with our loved ones just a little bit. Because when we see Jesus, that's, going to be, that's who I want to see. Yeah. Jesus. Why? August 14, 1962. I walked in the back in Free Hill Baptist Church in Rosalie, Alabama, lost and on my way to hell. Just got out of high school, lost. Thank God God saved me by his marvelous grace that night, birthed me in the family of God. Now, I've been looking for him. He's been good to me. He's looked after all these years, 50 years of preaching, 42 years of pastoring. God's been good to me. But thank God it's not over yet. Yeah. Better days are ahead, folks. Yeah. Yes. He's coming. Yes. Somebody said, I'm going, when I get to him, I'm going to ask God why I had to do all this, go through all this stuff. I don't believe that. No. We're going to be known as he's known. We're going to have the wisdom he's got. We'll know why. We won't have to ask no question. We'll know. Right. And when you, when you think of, when you weigh it all out, all you go through in this life, it works out for your good in God's glory. Yes. So the coming of it. So it's a first of all, it's a rapture. The rapture. That's those believers that died in the Lord. He's going to rapture us out of the air. Then there's going to be a revelation. He's coming back, and we'll stay and see a little more of that in a few minutes. He's coming back upon this earth. Then we see the splendor is coming. It's glorious. Glorious time. Yes. I like him glorious time, don't you? Yes, sir. Well, I've been in services when it seemed like God just moved in. Yeah. I was preaching a camp meeting up in North Carolina before I started pastoring up there. I preached in Welcome to Old Baptist Church about 35, 37 years. Camp meeting and revivals too. And uh, Brother Roger Penix, his Daddy had authorized the bad when he was 18 years old. He's been over like this. One of the, other than my grandfather and, and, and Papa Plymouth at Terra Vista, one of the greatest Christians I've ever known was him. He, he was a praying man. And when he, he preached for me, he, he, he back up against the pulpit, against the communion table, to stand up and preach. Because he couldn't, he couldn't stand up hardly. But anyway, we was having a meeting up there. Camp meeting, and they're saying, "Oh, he's all I need. Yeah. He's all I need." And people started shouting and praising God, and folks, it was real. And God got in that thing, and I looked back there at Papa. He looked like an angel. He was sitting, he's standing straight up. I mean, he was as straight as he'd be, and the glory of God was all over him. And this, me and this guy was rooming together. We shouted all the way home to the motel. We got in the motel room. We put pillows overhead and we still shot. God met with us. I like him times, brother. Amen. When God just comes down. Yes. Then I have been alone. Yes. I was coming, I was coming to, from North Carolina to Tennessee one time. I was going up Fancy Gap over. I was close to Mayberry, North Carolina. Coming up Fancy Gap and I was praying and this song on and I got happy. I don't know who drove that car up that mountain. <laughs> I guarantee you people thought it was crazy, but God moves in. That's going to be glory. That's glory. But can you imagine? Oh my. Can you imagine having a glorified body? 
a glorified, just like Jesus Christ. See, it don't hurt. Yeah. Amen. You can shout and not worry about it. Amen. It, 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 the glorious time, just when we see him. Just to see him is glorious. It's a glorious time. It, this is the greatest contrast to the first coming of Christ. This is this is first in the first the first time he come, Christ came humble. He came as a little babe, humble. And Isaiah said in fifty three verse seven said he opened not his mouth. Came as a sheep to the slaughter and opened not his mouth. Humble. But thank God he's coming back to earth next time to rule. Yeah. Revelation 19, if you want to read that. Let's turn around and read that just a few minutes. Revelation 19. And I saw heaven open. Behold a white horse. He that sat on him was called faithful and true and, and righteousness. He does judge and make war. His eyes were a flaming fire and his head were many crowns. And he had a name, a name written that no man knew but him as himself. And he was clothed with virgin and dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Amen. And the army which, now here's us, the army which were in heaven followed him up on a horse, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. That's you and I, we're coming back with him. And out of his mouth goes a, a sharp sword that when they should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and that the wine and with the almighty God. And he, he has on this virtue and on his thigh name, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Yes. Think about that. Yeah. He's coming back. Now, if you ain't never rode a horse, you better ride one. <laughs> He's coming back on a white horse. We're going to come and follow him. Yeah. He said, I don't believe that. That's what the Bible said. Yeah. Right. We're coming. He's coming to rule. Now listen to me tonight. Now I'm not trying to get on politics. But these politicians think they got everything in their hands. Yeah. They think they got everything going the way they want it to go. They think they're the boss. They think they're rulers. But I want to tell you at this time when he comes back, they're going to bow down to him and they're going to confess he is Lord. Yeah. Amen. It's going to be too late. Yeah. They're, going to they're going to be crying for the rocks to fall on for his face. Yeah. Right. He, read the Bible. They're going to be begging to die and can't die. That's in Revelation. Yeah. Or they, listen, I got news for you tonight. They may be having their way and they may be ruining us right now. But when God speaks, when God comes on the throne, they're going to bow down to him and realize Amen. they're not the boss. Right. They're not the boss now. God can snap them out any time. And I told Brenda the other day, I said, uh, my wife, I said, I wish he'd let me help him a little bit. <laughs> I get in the flesh every now and then. I can help him out a little bit. Can you, Brother George? Yeah. 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 I don't, I'm not long suffering as he is. But thank God. He's kind of, I'm, and listen. I'm coming back to reign with him. I don't know what I'm going to do during a thousand years reign of Christ. But I know I'm going to be with him. Right here on this earth. Now let me say this. What I'm on this. Now I might have said this before but we'll say it again. Everybody's talking about the earth being destroyed. That bunch up there in D.C. You know. Yeah. Earth's going to be destroyed and all this and that. Yeah. I got news for you. They don't know what they're talking about. Right. I know the earth's going to be here for a thousand and seven years. So, so it's got to, if it's going to be here a thousand and seven years to the end of it, what, it's going to still be here now. It's going to be seven years of tribulation right. on this earth. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Then he's going to come back and reign a thousand years right. on this earth. Then he's going to destroy this earth in heaven. Yes. God's going to do it. Amen. But listen, I'm glad I know the truth. Yes. Don't listen to these people. Right here's what you got. Right. He's 66 books of truth. And God's coming back after us for long. And thank God it's going to be a glorious time. He's coming back to rain. Then the showing in the, of his coming appear. He's going to appear one day. 
Only a few, only few knew his coming when he was born in Bethlehem, just a few. But only in the second coming will be different. The rapture, only the redeemed ones will see him. Only when he comes in rapture day, only the redeemed are going to see him. But when he comes back in the, in the revelation, according to Revelation 1 7, every eye is going to see him. Every eye is going to see him. When he comes back in the rapture, he's coming back secretly. He's coming back after his church. And we're leaving out. Then many of the queens we left out, they're going to be seven years of tribulation. They're going to think, boy, I got it made for three and a half years. We got rid of all them Christians. I don't know where they went. God, somebody just moved them out. Must have kidnapped them. Yeah, God did. He moved us out. Yeah. And they're going to wish to get, one guy said on radio, the greatest day of his life is when he wakes up one morning and he's not a Christian around. God's going to oblige him one of these days. Right. They're going to wish to God they was here. Because right. us and the Holy Ghost of God is what's keeping the wrath of God off this world today. But he's coming back after us. And thank God when he comes, I'm glad I'm ready, don't you? I'm glad. And then last, the Christ in his hope. The focus of hope is Jesus Christ. It's him. Not another. He's coming himself. The identity of Christ. He said he's a great God. How many believe he's a great God? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, he's a great God. That's identity. Yes. And then, then the deliverance of Christ. Our Savior, he said. Yes. The Savior, Jesus Christ. He's coming after us. And what a day, what a day that's going to be. The blessed hope we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's coming after us any day. Could be tonight. Yes. You don't have to be day. But he's coming. You know, you know how I know he's coming? He made me a promise. In John 14, I done read it to you a while ago. I will come again. If that's the only time it's in the Bible, you can bank on it. But there's many, many more. He's coming. And my question to you tonight, are you ready? I'm glad I'm ready. Before we can do that right there, he's coming. And I'm glad, thank God I can say tonight, even so come Lord Jesus. I'm ready. For him to come. You say, you mean you won't get out of this world? This world's not my home. Amen. Amen. I've got a better place waiting for me. And Brother George, that place we're going to, there'll never be another operating room. Never be another place where we ain't death. Be no more dying. No more sickness. No more sorrows. No more arthritis. It's going to be a glorious place, isn't it? Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Best of all, Jesus. That's in, best of all is Jesus Christ. Yes. And that could happen before we get home tonight. Amen. He's coming. But let me ask you a question again. Are you ready? If she comes to the piano tonight, are you ready to meet him? If you're not, if you're not saved, I don't know people's heart. I don't know a lot of you even by name, but God knows you. God knows your needs. You say, well, I'm going to get ready. But it may be too late one day. It may be too late. While we stand today, would you obey tonight? Obey the Lord.